disclaimer. Under Title 17 U.S. Code, in Sections 107 to 118 of the Copyright Law, all media in the video is used for purpose of review and commentary under the terms of fair use. All media used in this belongs to their respective copyright holders, aka I don't own this shit and I don't claim to own this shit, this shit belongs to the people who made it. Also, I swear a lot, if you don't like that, it's, just stop watching right now. Anyway, here's the thing. Yes, yes, I remembered my toothbrush. Yeah, I'm bringing, I'm bringing lots of socks. Everything's gonna be fine, hon. Listen, I'm just glad I get to take some time off and, you know, go have fun with everybody. Yeah, I remembered to feed Genji. She, you'll have her after I'm gone. Uh, sunglasses, yes. I brought sunscreen, too. Honey, I've gone through the checklist, like, four times. Everything is okay. Um... Unless there's anything at home you want me to take care of. The mail. No, I hadn't gotten the mail yet. Let me take a look. Honestly, hon, I'm not necessarily that worried about the trip itself. I'm just worried that, uh, I, I might have told you about this. Each year before I go to a convention, some motherfucker sends me a letter titled A Friend, and then I get trapped in my house via black magic. I still don't know exactly how that happens, but, uh, no, hon, you got the mail. It's right here. Wait a minute, I already did a video. <laughs> Fuck you, motherfucker. Hey everybody, it's Baron J, and who are you? All 7,000 of you, where did you come from? Should I do a 7K subspecial now? Is this a segue? Or am I just asking random questions? Well, whether it's who cut the cheese, who let the dogs out, or even inquiring about the identity of the true Slim Shady and asking him to rise, questions are something that are both necessary for communication and also for storytelling. This also counts for anime, as any good plot in an anime always has you asking questions like, uh, here, Attack on Titan. Where do the Titans come from? What the hell is in Eren's basement? Who the fuck is the Beast Titan, and why the fuck is the second season so much better than the first one? All of these are just basic examples, but you catch my drift here. In this vein, I have one question for you. Who done it? Yup, it's time for me to talk about mysteries again, and this time we've got a pretty interesting one. Roka no Yusha, or the Six Braves. Eh? Eh? You get it? 7,000 subscribers? Six Braves? Wait. Wait, why did I pick this? is a series produced by Passion. A studio most recently known for doing Hinako Note, but most notably, Rail Horse. Based on the light novel series produced by Ishio Yamagata, also known for his work on the Tadakao Shisho series, and directed by Takeo Takahashi, known for his direction of the fan favorite Spice and Wolf and Cough Cough, sound direction by one of the most prolific producers in anime history, Jesus God, look at his mal credits, people, this is an editing god. Anyway, fangirling aside, this show has a really stacked staff. Plot Adlet Meyer is a redhead animu Jack Sparrow looking motherfucker who is dead set on proving himself to be the world's strongest. The world's... Strongest what? Dentist? Haberdasher? Anime YouTube critic? He wants to become one of the Braves. In this world, the Braves are six chosen warriors who will defeat the so-called Demon King. So, naturally, a bunny girl princess named Nachitania. So, if she's Nachitania, then who the hell's Matanya? <laughs> <laughs> oh god, my inner dad is getting stronger by the day. Tells him that she is a brave, and frees him so that he can help her get to the rest of the braves. He gets separated and runs into a little flower child named... H hang on. Hey, is that how... Is that how I'm supposed to... I get... All right. Flamey Speed Draw! That's, that's her name, I guess. She's known as the Brave Killer. She is insanely cute, and also insanely deadly. They engage in a four-way standoff that ends in a stalemate. So they go to the meeting place of the six braves, to which they are all surprised to find... All seven of them showed up. Gotcha, bitches. So, yeah, Rokano Yusha came as a really big surprise to me. I didn't think I'd like it, and I ended up liking it a lot. And it's not necessarily one of those surprises like, ooh, something spooky, scary. It's not even like uh, your friends throw you a surprise party. It was more along the lines of the, the, the twist of finding out who the real villain is in Get Out. Uh, I, I will spoil this for you. It's, it's the white people. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yup, there are actually seven Braves that show up to the entire meeting place. Thus, this starts this whole controversy between all of them saying which ones are the real ones and who's the one that just showed up for no reason. Is there something going on here? Hang on one sec. I've, I've always wanted to know what this would sound like. Hang on. 
用のスリムシェイビは立ち上がってください。<笑> So, this is the point where Roka no Yusha hooked me. Suddenly, this was no longer a fantasy quest with seven warriors and cute girls and shit. It was actually anime Scooby Doo. All right, Nakama, let's split up and look for clues. Des. The infighting and the discussions had me going, and the revelations in the plot proved to delve myself further into it as it continued to play out. So, as far as the story goes, I'll tell you it's a twist and turn plot with not a huge amount of character depth from all players, but their backstories are pretty much fleshed out through context. The big draw here is the consistent trust issues that they have with each other, and by that, the trust issues that you will also have as the viewer. Yeah, halfway through the second part of the season, I was just like, I don't know who to trust in. Anymore. The animation and fight scenes are also really well done. Namely, the one from the second part of the season that is kind of a spoiler if I mention it, but just keep an eye out for that one. And also Adlet's initial fight in the first episode of the show. There is a lot of prowess and coordination shown from Passione here. Now, I've been singing its praises, but that doesn't mean that the Six Braves doesn't have its flaws. The sheer fact that a lot of the plot doesn't really kick in until episode four means that there's a bit of an entry fee for the roller coaster, and pacing is something I typically don't set aside. Like I was saying earlier as well, there's not a whole lot in the character development budget, but I will say that actually works in the context of this show. You don't necessarily want to get too attached to some of these characters, a la Game of Thrones. All in all, I can wholeheartedly recommend Roka no Yusha. It may seem like something else at first, but it evolves into something really engaging as you delve deeper. Like the old saying goes, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. And that is it, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. I know I've been gone for a while. I've had some life issues come up, and uh, they're finally starting to get themselves worked out. I know I said that last time, but I think it's for good this time. I, I think I got to the root of what it was, and it has nothing to do with my living situation, has nothing to do with my, with my girlfriend or anything like that. It had mainly to do with, uh, with work and how much work I have to do. And uh, I finally found something that's going to let me do both this and make the right amount of money at the same time. So, hooray! Word of the wise, if you do want to help support me monetarily, you can always support me on Patreon. It helps me out a lot, seriously. It's it's paid a few of my bills that I didn't even know I was going to have. So, hey, thank you guys so much. So yeah, Patreon's helping me put out regular content, and also, I might be uh, doing something a little bit quicker than I thought. Uh, I'm going to Anime Expo. I didn't know if you knew that. I might I might have mentioned that at the beginning of the video. So it's going to be me and uh, Holden and uh, Gart. Um, pretty sure we're going to run into Mother's Basement, Jeff, a couple times. Um, Aryan, uh, Megan Wake, uh, just uh, Glenn loves men. All those guys. We're, I'm going to like be running around with all of those guys and see all of them there. So. I'm really excited. I'm actually literally making this video on the day that I'm leaving to go to Indianapolis to catch my flight. Needless to say, if you see a motherfucker that looks like me out on the floor, please, by all means, fucking say hello. Give me a hug. I don't give a shit. Uh, I, I want to meet all of you guys so much because I did that last year and it was so much fun and I wasn't even expecting it. So uh, I, I really would love to meet all of y'all if you guys are down there. I will be making a video next month that will be all of my footage from the expo and it will be you know me hanging out with the guys and showing off some cool shit from the from the floor and stuff like that so hey look out you might be in there without further ado i'm going to go on a well deserved vacation thanks guys bye bye